What's it been like as a dad dealing with all the scorn that you've had to deal with coming from your children? <laughs> My parents are here. And we're going on a hike. You're gonna find out today how weird my dad is. He's weirder than me. You're also gonna, uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit about reconciliation and dads and sons. I think it should be good. My dad, we used to go fishing a lot and this spot has like tons of like, it's just gonna be all misty. It's gonna feel like fishing in the yeah. fall. Um, we're gonna be on the Sandy River, so it'll be really, really beautiful. Hey Dad, what's in your drink? <laughs> Ginger root, resveratrol. That's cool. Little pepper. What's it taste like? Very strong coffee but I think it's great. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna have a sip of this. Tastes kind of like dirt. What you got, Dad? Flags. We're gonna use those. Get some good B-roll, some tasty B-roll with these. Yeah, there you go. The different colors mean different things. Purple has to do with royalty. This shimmery blue is more a heaven color. One real prophetic person made the statement that yellow is Jesus' favorite color, and sometimes I have a sense of that. They all are connected with different things in Scripture. I try to listen to what, I'm, what color I'm supposed to flag with and use it. <laughs> it's hard in the wind. That's great. We should take a moment to talk about my dad's channels. We should do a shameless plug. Can you do a shameless plug in under 20 seconds, Dad? <laughs> I doubt it. My website was shut down because my web service provider went out of business. Uh, <laughs> but I'm on YouTube as Turning Us. The basic concept is that the mind of our heart learns through thousands of repetitions over the course of our life to think in certain patterns that unless we take steps to interrupt those patterns of thinking, we just keep going the same way throughout the rest of our life. So the idea is to turn our heart away from the thinking patterns of the world and toward God in a way that makes him our God, rather than our having to depend on ourselves or on earthly sources. So there's a Buddhist reflection that I found years ago that says that we are our ancestors in a literal sense, and to be resentful to our ancestors is to be resentful to some extent toward ourselves and that has really resonated with me and I think been a step along a journey that I've wanted to take for a long time toward reconciling and it almost feels to me like I don't have access to the good things about my dad if I'm not willing to kind of work through the, the things that were difficult. What's it been like as a dad dealing with all the scorn that you've had to deal with coming from your children? It's been really difficult because I've had to ask some very honest questions and search my heart. There's a prophecy in the Bible that the hearts of the fathers will turn toward the children and the hearts of the children toward their fathers. And what I've had to do is decide that I was going to be more childlike and playful and not as demanding that others come to my rescue in terms of maintaining my pride and honor. In the early days, the calling of God on my own life terrified me, frankly, and 
the thought of going forward with that alone uh, made me want to bring the family with me when I couldn't explain it to myself well enough to expect anyone to come with me in those days. I, I have to trust that the Holy Spirit is working in them and be patient and yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. It's a uh, it's difficult work. If there's something that seems like it's kind of tearing us apart, we don't tend to sweep those things under the carpet. And I think that's necessary for, for reconciliation. You really have to talk things through, work things out. The practice of gratitude seems to me to be so central to just like wellness in general. You can't just sit down and write out all the things you love about your dad and say, there, I'm being grateful, you know, like, <laughs> because th there's a lot of things that I'm really grateful for, like a ton of things that I'm really grateful for from my parents. Um, but there's something about not acknowledging and not reconciling that s s sabotages your ability to enjoy those good things. It's not like the challenges that we've had in our relationship didn't happen. It's like we've talked about them. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you how many like heated discussions we've had that have just left me feeling just to such peace. <laughs> so <you> started out <laughs> in incredible levels of turmoil. Yeah, and it's like so <sighs> freeing to have those conversations. And, and at some point it dawned on me, like if you only see each other three times a year, you have all this baggage and then you hang out. It's like, well, what is going to be, what's it going to be like? You know, it's like if you want those three times a year you see each other to be really rich, you have to do the work. So anyway, yeah. I'm thankful for you, Dad. Thank you. I'm Me glad you I'm, also. I'm glad you're my dad. Yep. Same to you, but more of it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> I still remember. spent a lot of time on this channel talking about 
the complexity of growing up as an evangelical kid. And, um, you know, one of the things I struggle with the most about that tradition is that I think a lot of the theology is built to control people. And um, you know, if there's anything about my dad, it's that he's worked tirelessly to be free, to be unshackled. I think that's apparent, seeing him wave flags around in public parks. I'm so thankful for that. And it feels at some point, you know, like the bitterness and the pain, all the negative stuff inside me is like some part of my body and my my soul just wants to release all that stuff and and be able to get to all the joy and, and how thankful I am for my dad. And I just know there's a lot of us dealing with these kinds of things and I hope this encourages you. I don't want to pretend that my experience with my father is going to be the same as another person's relationship with their father or mother. But I do, um, I do hope that maybe in some way this encourages you, whoever you are, to try to find, keep, you know, stay in the arena, keep working at it. The song that you heard today was written for this YouTube video. Um, and it is currently just sitting on my hard drive, but we are increasingly close to starting a Patreon. Some of the music that we make gets released and put on Spotify or whatever, but a lot of it we make so much of it, we'll end up probably just being on Patreon. Um, it's a fun way to connect with people that want to maybe support us monthly and help us to keep making art. So if you enjoyed this, please stay in touch. We'd be so honored to hear from you in the comments. Share with your family, your friends who are grieving and trying to sort their pain out. And, um, and we hope to connect with you more. New videos coming every week or two right now. We're sort of finding our rhythm. That's the cheesy way to end it. I'm just going to end it. Okay, bye.